I know the announcement everybody can't stop talking about is about the fact that Buck Showalter was named the National League <laughs> Manager of the Year for the New York Mets. First time ever in Mets. Oh, wait. That's not the announcement everybody's talking about today. Yes, thank you, Mike. No, the announcement everybody's talking about is, of course, that Donald J. Trump has declared that he is running for president for the third time, though I believe technically this is the fourth time. He did announce it before at a Comedy Central roast, though nobody believed him at the time. Joining us now to discuss on the Genuine Autoglass Studio line is the chairman of the board for the Zionist Organization of America, which honored former President Trump just a few days ago at their annual dinner. Thank you for joining us today, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. So why did you guys decide to pick President Trump for this? I mean, after all, the left says he's a raging anti-Semite, and you guys said he's the most pro-Israel, pro-Jewish president we've ever had. Yeah, I think that the record speaks for itself. I mean, he did more... Uh, consistent with joint Israeli-American interests than any president ever has done, other than maybe the founding of the state of Israel, President Truman. But uh, but this is a series of things, and you know I'll go down and just uh, give you a checklist one for a minute. Sure. Um, the Abraham Accords. I mean, uh, clearly in the United States and Israel's best interest, peace agreement between na- trade agreement between nations wouldn't even speak before. He's a deal maker. He was able to do that. Taylor Force Act. Taylor Force is a great American patriot, a soldier killed by Palestinian terrorists. We found out, um, I actually took depositions in a case over there of some of the arch terrorists, uh, um, really uncovering this pay for slave program uh, so that uh, American dollars that go to the Palestinian Authority and the PLO being used to, are still being used now again to pay terrorists. They call them martyr payments. Terrorists who kill American citizens are martyred, their families are supported, the terrorists are supported in prison. He said, no more. We're not going to have this anymore. American dollars are fungible. We're not going to let any of our money go to the Palestinian Authority until they disavow that program. Mahmoud Abbas still refuses to disavow it. Withdrew from the United Nations Human Rights Council. Greatest purveyors of terrorism in the world sit on that council, anti-American, anti-Israeli. He said, we're not spending our money that way. Jerusalem Embassy set a standard. It's been the law. Every president promised to do it in the last many years. Uh, Only Donald Trump did it. Um, Each of the other presidents would do a security waiver. Well, the time just isn't right. Donald Trump did it despite all these predictions of Armageddon if he does it. Moved the United States Embassy to Jerusalem, the eternal capital of the Jewish state, Jewish people. And it it, it was principle over political expediency. Um, And on and on and on. Says the Golan Heights belongs to Israel because they do and they always will. Um, And then the Iran deal, of course was uh, hardly anything could be in the greater interest of the United States and Israel together. So the Zionist Organization of America decided he needed to be recognized for these great accomplishments, and so they chose him as their honoree for a very special award, uh, which was given to him on November 13th. Um, I asked him personally to come. He said absolutely he'd be honored to do it and as a personal favor, but also uh, and very appreciative of the, of the honor. We're talking with David Schoen, who's the chairman of the board for the Zionist Organization of America. And I know what a lot of listeners are going to say. They're going to say, well, Ari, that's all well and good. We love Israel. We support Israel. But back here at home, what did he do for Jews here? And one of the things that was most impressive to me was the fact that on Hanukkah, while he was president at the White House Hanukkah party, he signed legislation which was beefing up the penalties and making it harsher for people who commit anti-Semitism. He was doing all that, and that doesn't get enough play, and yet now they're still calling him an anti-Semite. It's ridiculous to me. You're 100% right. He actually, uh, during his administration, Title VI, uh, Protection for against discrimination on college campuses was applied to anti-Semitism so that discrimination against Jewish students for being Jewish uh, now would be enforced on college campuses, first time ever. It's still a very real problem, but the first step was recognizing that the law ought to apply to that, and he was very strong about that. He spoke about that at the uh, gala on Sunday night also. He's very proud of it. What's mind-boggling to me is that the Biden administration is trying to re-engage with Iran. We see them trying to re-enter the Iran nuclear deal, which basically means pay them until they come up with a nuclear missile and then go, whoops, kind of like what Clinton did with North Korea, because we know how well that worked out. Iran is a number one state sponsor of terror in the world. Right now, they're sponsoring terror against U.S. troops, not just against Israel. And yet, They're on the U.N. Human Rights Commission. They are literally one of the guys who voted to execute 15,000 protesters who are women mostly who and students who are protesting the fact that the Iranian regime has gone out of control and beat a woman to death. Allegedly, this is who the Biden administration wants to negotiate with. It's insane. 
it's really insane. And they're using now the same primary negotiator, Robert Malley, who you know worked for the Obama administration and negotiated the deal. The deal is clearly against American interests, Israeli interests, the interests of safety around the world. This is a terrorist regime we cannot deal with uh, in this manner. And we saw the you know the agreement didn't even deal with their. Uh, uh, missile programs, or the missile program now, we see them using it with Russia, and uh, and they, they pose a threat to every other country in the world. So we're talking with David Schoen, who is the chairman of the board of the Zionist Organization of America. We saw earlier this year that the Jewish Heritage Museum in New York, which is run by a bunch of leftists, caved to pressure and canceled an appearance of Ron DeSantis. Did you have any issues with your venue? Was there anybody putting pressure on you guys to cancel this event because Donald Trump was your honoree? Yeah, I suspected it. Um, at first, you know, uh, there was a suggestion that uh, Governor DeSantis might appear, and that raised an issue for the venue. And then when we named President Trump as the honoree, uh, we had to have a phone call with the venue, but ultimately they agreed to it. They expected, you know, a number of protesters across the street. We didn't see so much in the way of protesting. I will tell you this, though, and it reminded me, you know, when I was watching the announcement last night, um, when Donald Trump walked into that room in the gala, this was a huge venue – uh, seven, eight hundred people there. Um, the crowd became absolutely electric. When he walked in that door and they announced, ladies and gentlemen, the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, people went crazy. It's a standing ovation, sustained. Um, he was very, very gracious the whole night. Always has been in every conversation I've ever had with him, and I've had many, many conversations with him. Um, then I spoke with him the next night, you know, the night before the uh, announcement. He was very upbeat. And he really appreciated the warm reception that he got. But he, he speaks about the issues, and these are all issues he cares about. He knows them inside and out. And uh, it was very impressive, his whole presentation during the dinner and, uh, and then the phone call afterwards. In the last few minutes, we have with David Schoen, who is the chairman of the board for the Zionist Organization of America. So, as you mentioned, as everybody knows, unless they've been living under a rock or turned off their cell phone for the day, President Trump is running for yet another term. He made that announcement last night at Mar-a-Lago. Does your organization do endorsements? Is that something you guys would consider? Is it something like you're looking at the whole field? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, we're not permitted by law to make any endorsements, and we certainly don't. We don't get involved with politics. We just you know, very much appreciated President Trump's uh, support for Israel and recognized them for that reason. But we don't take any political positions on anything, and we're not permitted to. David Schoen, appreciate you joining us today. If people want to learn more about the Zionist Organization of America, what's the best way for them to do so? Uh, ZOA.org. The website is terrific. David Schoen, chairman of the board for the Zionist Organization of America. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's an honor. Great to be on your show. We got a whole lot more to discuss as the show continues. You're listening to The Ari Hoffman Show on Talk Radio 570 KVI.